Hey guys, what is up? Chris here with Cohesive Friendship Unit. Just me today. We had a surprising day in the world of video games in a in kind of a sea of dead news. We have a huge update on the Xbox One Series X. It seems like most of these next gen announcements are coming seemingly out of nowhere, either from a random Wired article or Phil Spencer updating his Twitter image with the latest system on a chip. But here we have it, again, there's a new spec sheet that is official for the Xbox One Series X, and I want to dive into what this tells us and what this, what, what questions this will leave us asking, given all this information, what we still need to know. Uh, but before we get into all that, we are doing a giveaway for a copy of Risk Arena 2. At 2250 subs, all you gotta do is be subscribed, so if you love us, sub us, and throw us a like. Let me know down below how you're feeling about next gen because I'm I'm warming up to it more and more the more we see about these specs if they're true. Because to an extent, things seem a little too good to be true. Let's start with that GPU. So we're looking at apparently a 12 teraflop GPU. A couple things to note about that 12 teraflops GPU. The first of which is that it is double the teraflops of the Xbox One X. That's a huge deal, guys. The Xbox One X was a monster GPU. Uh, the first console that was doing really true 4K on a regular basis, not just uh, dynamic resolution scaling up to 4K, but there were a lot of truly 4K games. Uh, the At the time, it was that GPU's about on par with something like a 1070, a little less than a 1070. That was an impressive console, and the price came with that impressive console. Uh, here we have a 12 teraflop GPU just a few years later. And what's interesting about that 12 teraflop GPU is uh, now teraflops are not everything, but if we're looking at strict teraflop counts, that GPU is going to be somewhere between as good as a 2080 and a 2080 Ti, which in the right market is a <laughs> that's about a thousand dollar GPU. Granted, those GPUs have been out for quite some time, and we're expecting to see new GPUs coming off the floor, but the fact that they could get that much GPU down to a system on a chip is really impressive, unless maybe there is a dedicated GPU in there, I don't know. But regardless, that GPU is a monster, and an expensive monster at that, unless they're planning on taking a serious loss on each sale. Another thing to note, is there will be hardware accelerated ray tracing. And I think this, to me, seeing that we are officially getting hardware accelerated ray tracing in the next gen, officially, like, not rumors, not hints, but like, yes, there will be hardware accelerated ray tracing. We don't know the extent yet, but the fact that we're gonna get it means for the PC people out there, if you're in the market for a new GPU, it might be good to consider picking up a card that does support ray tracing. If you're between like a 2060 Super and like a, a 1080 or a 1070 Ti or something like that, maybe go with the 2060. If not because you'll have that ray tracing, which seems like it is going to be a big deal going forward. Now that uh, devs have had some time to work out the kinks and the cost of true hardware accelerated trace, ray tracing is going down, it will be interesting to see because AMD still doesn't really have a hardware accelerated ray tracing solution and they are presumably providing these GPUs. So it will be interesting to see what AMD solution is, uh, not only on the console side, but what the equivalent PC side is. And that's all for the GPU that I really wanted to talk about. On the CPU, this is kind of old news, but I thought it would be good to kind of bundle it in. Uh, we're getting a Zen 2 CPU, and I think I found this. I found this comment on Reddit from a software developer. Uh, this is the best, and I, I agree with it. Like I could show you bar graphs and charts that kind of compare the two, but I think this is the best way to kind of compare the Zen 2 CPU and the Jaguar cores in the current consoles. Uh, quote. Um, and an 8x8 core Zen 2 cores are roughly four times faster than eight Jaguar cores, which is uh, also giving you roughly two times the clock speed. You're going to get approximately eight times faster workloads. So that is huge, guys. The Jaguar CPUs are largely responsible 
for being bottlenecks in the current generation for what's capable, especially in like the physics department. And now we have not just uh, Ryzen CPUs, but we have Zen 2 CPUs. We have basically current CPUs. Maybe they won't be current when the consoles launch, but they're currently current, <laughs> even though of course they're gonna be some kind of custom spec. Regardless, that's huge because Jaguar, I don't know if people, if, if you're mostly a console follower, you don't really follow PC hardware. When Zen came onto the market, first generation Zen, it just not only did it just blow Jaguar out of the water, the previous architecture, but it is basically responsible for an almost complete reversal of AMD's recent market share over Intel. It's just the amount of products that are getting AMD and the amount of just praise coming from AMD over Intel is outstanding. And it's all because of this Zen 2 architecture or this Zen architecture originally. So these are huge deals that we are not only uh, not getting an Intel CPU or not getting an older Jaguar CPU, but that we are in fact getting Zen 2. That is going to be a huge deal despite some of the other things that we are going to talk about, like that NVMe SSD. So here's the thing. It seems like this NVMe, NVMe SSD is being poised as kind of the big killer seller thing, which causes me to ask a few questions. One, if this is what they're picking as the huge selling point, should we be worried about the other hardware? But based on what we just reviewed, the other hardware is looking really good so why are they putting such not only uh xbox but sony as well putting such a big deal on this super fast ssd uh because they're they're talking oh there's going to be quick resume for games you're not going to have to load up a game uh, you can just hop right in if you had a like a save state in one and there's going to be little if any loading on a lot of games and to me a couple things to note one <laughs> Personally, I mean, I play on consoles and I play on on PC. Loading can be annoying, but it's never like really been a huge issue. And the other thing is excluding consoles, which tend to have slower hard drives. I personally run most of my games on my PC off of a 7200 RPM drive. I do have a SATA SSD for I, I do have a few games on it, but for the most part, I'm running off of a 7200 RPM drive, and I don't notice that much of a difference. Of course, games are getting bigger, more complex, we're gonna have to stream more data, but I don't know if an MVME SSD is as big of a deal as it's kind of being advertised to be, personally. Let me know down below if you think differently. Like, yeah, the old 5400 RPM drives are just trash, and those are dust, and I also agree that uh, maybe a 7200 RPM drive is going to become dated relatively soon, but uh, I don't know about this MVME thing. If it's if it's cost efficient, this is my biggest thing. If they can give you one to two terabytes, because look at Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC, that's a 150 gigabyte game. Games are going to start becoming 200 plus gigabytes per game. If they're going to be shipping you a one terabyte drive that's costing a ton of money, I'm not sure if that's worth it personally. Again, let me know down below if you do think that that's worth it. That is something I am worried about on top of the GPU is the cost of this SSD and the amount of storage you're going to get with it. And if you're going to be able to add another SS or another hard drive solution, or if it just won't be allowed, you have to have a certain speed uh, MVME solution because that's kind of what the operating system is expecting to be able to do these quick resumes uh, among other things. So yeah the, the last thing I want to talk about is this HDMI 2.1 120 FPS games in 8k. Uh, 8k I personally don't think we will have to care about that in this generation or maybe even the next generation. I'm not even sure we need to care about 8K because the size of the displays that you need before you need to start scaling to those resolutions gets pretty big pretty fast. Unless you're planning on having a screen the size of your wall, probably won't matter all that much. But the 120 frames per second is uh, a nicety. It'll be interesting to see what the targeted spec is for games. Like, 
is it going to be a right now if you use an xbox one x the kind of target you usually get is either a 1080p unlocked or a 1080p 60 or a 4k 30 and I, I wonder if it's going to now be a 4K 60 or a 4K 30 and a 1080p 120 frames per second or an unlocked frame rate that is around 120. It'll be interesting to see kind of what the targets are. I personally think both the 8K and the 120 is going to be more important in the backwards compatibility, which has been confirmed for all generations of Xbox, which is really cool. Maybe it'll be playing the original Halo Combat Evolved in 8k on day one at 120 frames per second i'm not sure how hard that is to run because it's being emulated but you know it's fun to dream so i do have a few big questions about the next gen including series x given all this information uh how much ram are we getting how much usable ram are we getting it was a huge deal that we got eight gigs in the launch of the original xbox one and ps4 and it was an even bigger deal when that eight gigs went up to 12 essentially with the the xbox one x i'm curious to see why we haven't been given a ram number probably because it won't be the big jump that we got from 360 to one from 360 to one we went from 500 megabytes to 8 gigs that's a 16x increase in memory i doubt we're gonna get that and it's kind of interesting to think of where we will end up because 32 seems high but 16 seems low so that's kind of curious and really the biggest question i have after this is going to be price we already talked about these nvme solutions for the hard drive and the GPU is going to, at least on a teraflop standpoint, be competing with something between a 2080 and a 2080 Ti. I struggle to see how this could be under $700 at the moment, but again, these are just numbers to toy with. It's, it is hard to understand and it's hard to know if they'll sell things at a loss, etc., etc. The final thing I do want to kind of think about is how this backward slash forward compatibility is going to work and if it's going to hinder the Series X. Microsoft has said before that they don't plan on producing any exclusive Series X games for the first year plus. That and killer apps like Halo uh, is going to be launching on both the Xbox One as well as the Series X day one and other games like Cyberpunk if you buy it on the xbox one you will get the series x version included so it's more yes it's nice that we have these zen 2 cpus that are capable of so much more but are we even going to use them to their fullest potential and how long is it going to take before we get to see the full potential of this shiny new hardware but that's all for me guys i will catch you next time